Hello guys, this is an induction video we prepared especially for the person, HSC persons who joined newly at our MEIL. So welcome to the MEIL safety department. Initially, the first slide we are mainly discussing about the HSC policy of Mega Engineering and Infrastructures Limited. Therefore, this is a mandatory for you that you read, understand and get familiar with MEIL HSC policy. And this policy, it is drafted in accordance with the ISO 14001 as well as 45001 to fulfill the requirement of these both international standards. And finally, this policy has been undersigned by our Honorable Managing Director, sir. So we will discuss here a little bit point wise, what are the policy? So the first point is we at MEIL are committed to implement the highest standards of occupational health, safety and environment in all the activities, products and services of our organizations through our health, safety and environment management system. So MEIL is committed to fulfill all the requirements at the highest level for fulfilling the requirements of health, safety and environment and for that we prepared one HSC manuals or you can say the HSC management systems for that for that next point is we are committed to the provision of safe and healthy working condition for the prevention of work related injuries and ill health and uh, it indicates that the organization has committed for the providing all the health and safety working conditions to prevent injuries and ill health next is we are committed to the fulfillment of all the HSC related legal requirements, compliance obligations and other requirements of all the interested parties related to our organization. It means the organization is also committed to fulfill all the legal requirements. It might be including the state level legal requirements or the national legal, legal requirements as well as the compliance obligation. It includes the compliance of the ISO 14001 as well as 45001 or sometimes the requirements of the clients as well as the additional points we also focused about that requirements of interested parties relevant to our organization. The next is we are committed to the elimination of hazards and the reduction of occupational health and safety risk. So organization is also committed to eliminate the hazards which is available and present at the workplace and to reduce the risk as much as possible relevant to the health and safety. We are committed to the consultation and participations of workers and where they exist workers representatives. So organization is also fulfilling the requirement of ISO 45001 which mainly focus about the workers participation in the management system. That's why we included these points in our HSE policy. We are committed to the protection of the environment including prevention of pollutions and other specific environmental commitments relevant to our organization. We are also committed to the protection of environment including the prevention of pollutions and other things and which is relevant to the environmental commitments for our organization. Next is we are committed to protect the natural environment from harm and degradation arising from our organization's activities, products and services. So the most point is we are also committed for the protection of the natural environment and sometimes degradations which are causing from our organization's activities, products and services. Next point is we are committed to the continual improvement of, of our HSC management systems to enhance HSC performance in all the activities of the organization. This is the important clause of all the ISO standards. Mainly we are focusing here ISO 14001 as well as 45001. So both standards are telling about the, the continual improvements. So we included this, all the main key elements of ISO 14001 in our HSC policy. Let us understand the HSC department's organogram. The department is led by HOD HSC. His name is Dr. Ravi Piretti. Under him, there is a four teams. First one is a machinery safety teams. There is a mechanical engineers who is conducting machinery safety audit at the project site. The next is electrical safety team. There is electrical engineers who are mainly conducting the electrical safety audit at all the project site. Next team is a support team. It consists of three different teams called as a recruitment teams, procurement teams and planning teams. The 
roles of the recruitment team is the conducting and the hiring the re uh, persons required for the safety departments the next is a procurement team which mainly purchasing the hsc related materials and sending to the project site the next is a planning team the main role of the planning planning team is the planning for the hsc manpower required at the project site and doing the joining formalities and etc all that the fourth team is a hsc technical teams which consists of a five different teams the first one is a hhc managers they are the main role and responsibility of the hhc managers they are handling the sector wise project there are different different sectors here like irrigations water management refineries and etc those sector wise project is handled by these hhc managers under him there are several hhc coordinator coordinators they are handling 10 to 15 projects there are another teams called as a documentation teams these teams are mainly handling the bid related documents as well as the hsc plans and other emergency response plans are required for the each projects the monitoring team the main roles and responsibility of the monitoring team is the monitor whatever the department has planned and these things are being implemented at the project site at what at what efficiency levels and what efficiency levels so the these team are monitoring on that planning and that implementation the next one is a training team the main roles and responsibility of the training teams are planning and conducting the training from the ho levels the site hsc officers mainly comes comes under the ho hsc coordinators and these site safety officers are reporting at the head office to the ho hsc coordinators so it is mainly workplace where our work is going on so the workplace the definition is place under the control of meil where a person need to be or to go for work purpose the terms refer to the following areas so in short you can say that wherever meil work is going on that will come under the scope of hsc and suppose any persons are traveling or doing any work for the meil this work area will also come under the hsc let us focus on each point by point like the physical boundaries of the project site which are clearly marked by fencing or any other identifiable means so wherever it is possible to uh, make a fencing or any visible boundaries that areas will come under the our hsc scopes or sometimes it is not possible physically for example in the road project or the pipeline project it is not possible to make a fence of a uh, fencing in the entire project area so that be, uh, you can say that it is a invisible types of fencing that will comes under our scopes the next point is other area or areas where employees and workers including contractor workers also execute the project related works including work related travels and other forms of working environment outside the physical boundaries of the site so wherever any workers any employees or any contractor workers are performing any work related any work related to the our organization or any travels for the work purpose outside the physical boundaries will also come under hsc scopes the next point is employees commuting to and from their place of residence or on work related travel are also included in the scope of safety so when sometimes the employees are coming from their home to the site and going from the site to the home travels related to the work these areas will also come under the scope of safety let us focus in the pictorial view for example at any project site there is a uh, photographs like mil employees contractor and employees are outside the boundaries so this is an misconception people are people should not think that only mil employees will come under the scope of safety okay this is the actual picture rep pictorial representations for the scope of safety anyone it might be mil employees client officials visitors travelers contractors and their employees even trespassers and the thief are entering inside the our workplace they will also come under the scope of safety so the person who join in hsc departments of meil they have to perform the following activities and their roles and responsibility will be according to the bocw act 1996 so the main focus on that is the bocw act tells about the 
assist audit and advise and these three areas are the major areas of, of health and safety officers this area has to be covered it should be noted that the planning and execution of safety activities is the responsibility of the project team headed by the project manager so whatever the planning and execution will be done for the health and safety purpose it has to be done by the project execution team which is led by the project manager next is in the above context the safety officer has numerous responsibilities listed below so one by one we will discuss here about the health uh, roles and responsibility of hsc personnel which means give safety inputs to the site in charge and the execution teams very whenever necessary means you can say that at the planning stage every safety officer or hsc officers has to give their inputs about the implementation of health and safety about the planning what are the requirements need for the uh, implementing work and executing the work in the safe manners then conducting these several trainings including the induction toolbox talks pep talks or, or any special trainings related to the project site next whenever there are any hsc lapses in the project site the safety officer should record such observation and explain to the concerned person means every safety officer has to observe any lapses at the project site and explain to the concerned person for that there we are using a whatsapp group we will discuss about the whatsapp group later conduct daily meeting with site in charge to update about hsc related issues and send a report to the ho so on every day whatever the issues relevant to the safety are identified that has to be discussed with the site in charge or the project manager and this that report must be sent to the ho submit end of shift and end of week reports to the ho hsc teams so whatever a safety person is doing at the site that has be consolidated in end of shift report and after one week it it has to be consolidated in end of week reports submit a monthly report to the ho hsc team about the hsc statistics so there are several documents relevant to the hsc statistics that has to be prepared and reported to the ho hsc teams prepare and submit the following monthly reports to the ho hsc teams we are conducting a lot of the audits at the site level which includes the internal safety audits about internal health and safety environment audits internal electrical safety audits internal food safety audits internal store safety audits and internal fire safety audits these five audits will be conducted on a monthly basis and there is a one more audit that is called as internal machinery safety audits that has to be conducted on quarterly basis then maintain all the required documentation about all hsc activities at the project site so there are a lot of the documents which is required to fulfill during the execution of the projects that has to be prepared by the hsc personnel partner with the site in charge in conducting hsc promotional activities at the project site from the our hsc departments we are conducting approximately 18 promotional activities per year so you will get more than one promotional activities per month for for the execution of, of these promotional activities the safety officer has to be performed and make a plan and uh, discuss with the project in charge to execute the hsc promotional activities there is one another point which must be in keep in mind that safety implementation teams suppose sometimes if a project manager hire a safety personnel on site basis for implementing safety for and these sites this safety personnel will not be hired by the hsc department of mega engineering so in this case if a, a project manager is hiring a safety personnel on a site basis so that hired safety personnel will report to the project manager at the site level itself and that hired safety personnel will not be a part of mil hsc departments and he will not report to mil hsc departments he will be alone itself at the project site and he will be the member of the execution team not he will be member of a safety team so as i discussed earlier internal safety audits frequency uh, there are five audits which must be done on monthly basis these are the health safety environment audits electrical safety audits food safety audits store safety audits and fire safety audits and one more audit is machinery safety audit audit that will be conducted on quarterly basis 
The next point is severity level for the safety. So as we as a safety officer we are aware that there are a lot of different different types of observation are we can find at the site level. So to streamline the process we had categorized all the observation in five level that is called as a severity one, two, three, four, five. So when you are any situation are like that there is a possibility of low probability of injuries including near misses. So in that case you can provide severity one. And where is the situation you are identifying that there is a chance of happening of any incident and which required a first aid treatment. So for that situation you can provide a severity level 2. And if the situation increases where is the chance of happening any incident and the victim required a treatment of from the medical professional. So the person will reach within the 48 hours. For that situation you can provide a severity level 3. And situation again it will increase to the worst, worst condition. So in that situation if there is a chance of happening any incident and the person need a medical treatment and the victims will return after the 48 hours of the accident then you can provide a severity level 4. And finally for the severity level 5 if there is a chance of happening or any accident and which can result to the disabilities or death then on for that situation you can provide a severity level 5. So wherever you are identifying that observation having a severity level 4 so in that situation then you can issue a safety advisory warning note to the concerned workplace engineer workplace supervisor or whoever the in charge of that workplace. By stating that there is a one form for the issuing the safety advisory warning note which consists of this, uh, some requirements like what are the lapses you identified and what are the recommendations you are giving to rectify them. So this is a safety advisory warning note. It is advisable to stop the work, not compulsory to stop the work. But when it comes to the severity level 5 observation, so in that situation or you are authorized to issue a stop work order for that particular workplace. As I discussed earlier, that there is a daily meeting with site in charge regarding the day-to-day -day activities and issues relevant to the health and safety which you are facing at the project level. So for that things, you have to discuss daily with the site in charge about the issues. And this can be done by the entire team face to face or if it is not possible by the entire team then only one person who might be the site safety in charge who can discuss with the site in charge about the day to day activities. If it is not possible meeting by face to face then you can call to the project in charge and discuss the issues. Suppose any incident happen at the workplace at the project site then this is the procedure of incident reporting. Like immediately you have to inform your respective safety coordinator at HO by the telephone or any other suitable means. After that you have to prepare a preliminary incident report and send to your respective HO HSC coordinators. And after that you have to conduct a detailed investigation report by with the help of execution team and the witness or if it is possible then also take a, a consideration of the victim. After that, this prepared incident, detailed incident report you have to send to the HO HSC coordinator. Coming to the indenting procedure, a link of the detailed video will be shared to you. Here I am just discussing about uh, this short, uh, in the short about the indenting procedures. That the indenting will be initiated by the material requisition format also called as a MRF. It, can, it is a one Excel sheet workbook which consists of three different sheets. So the how you will fill this excel sheet it, it is clearly explained in the indenting procedure video. So you have to watch them regarding the indenting procedures. So after the filling the excel sheet you have to take a signature from the project manager and send the signed copy as well as the excel sheet to the HSE proc at bhadra.tv mail id as well as keep your coordinator in the loop. So while sending this indent you have to send the work order for all the indents also. So after the sending indent from your side, our procurement team will raise indent through e-bill at after the verification from the coordinate, coordinator as well as the HOD HSC. 
so after the verification the our procurement team will paper the purchase order and they will send to the vendors you will get a purchase order information for the tracking purposes kindly keep in your mind that while sending the in material requisition form you have to send the work order of the subcontractor also and remember remember that you have to prepare a separate indent for separate work orders so how uh, there will be a different different contractors having a different different work orders so you have to prepare the separate separate indents for different contractors having a different work orders in case of any exception like somebody some contractor has a not work order so for that we can give exempt, exemption and this ex exception will be called as a they have to provide a written approval from the hod or you can say the vertical head of that project those vertical head all called as a director bdnp director projects director hydrocarbons as well as president project as discussed earlier for each projects we are having a project hsc whatsapp group so in that whatsapp group the following members must be there like a project manager and site hsc team members project execution teams including all the engineers from the various departments store personnel accounts and some other whatever the department is there every person has to be there and ho project coordinator from the execution team ho hsc coordinator from the safety departments and hod hsc or apart from these members additional member can also be there in the whatsapp group as recommended by the project manager so in the whatsapp group the following report has to be sent on daily basis or whenever their frequency will come like induction so you have, whenever you are conducting the induction program you have to share the following informations like photographs date time in 24 hours format location where where you conducted and name of the contractors and number of the person attended these are the uh, right side the example of the whatsapp group screenshot for the induction program then daily training talks the photographs of the daily training talks the uh, date time in 24 hour format location name of the contractor and number of person attended in the TV, uh, daily training talks and topic discuss in this daily training talks remember that we in MEIL the TBT is called as a daily training talks pep talk so when you are in the day to day time and during the visiting time pep, uh, safety officers are conducting or giving instruction to the workers that is called as a pep talk for that we are also uh, we, they, you have to report in the whatsapp group in these formats like photographs date time in 24 hours format location name of the contractor number of the person attended and topic discussed in the pep talk special training suppose we are conducting any special training for any particular topics like a height work confined space or any other thing so for that for that we are calling as a special train technical training so for that you have to provide the photographs date time in 24 hours format locations name of the contractor number of person attended and topic discussed on the special training daily observation this you are uh, you are conducting day on day to day basis so wherever you are identifying any lapses this you have to report as a daily observation so picture of the uh, picture with descriptions so whatever the picture you have you are taking with the description of the identified lapses date time in 24 hours format location severity level as discussed earlier which ranges from 1 to 5 and the responsible person who is the responsible person for this observation and recommended action so whatever action you are recommending for that observations to close the issues rectification report so whenever that recti uh, observation is being rectified that is called as a rectification and you have to post them also like with the picture with the descriptions so whatever the picture they have uh, after the rectification you have to take with the description whatever the action they have taken then observation posted date on which date the observation was posted and the time in 24 hours format location severity level of the observation closed on on which date it has been closed time in 24 hours format of the closing date closing issues and the responsible person who had closed it 
safety advisory warning note as i discussed earlier whenever the severity level will be 4 then you have to issue the safety advisory warning note there is a format as measurement as uh, showing in the right side so issue the safety advisory warning note with the descriptions provide the date and times location severity is it will be force concern work supervisor as well as recommended action what you are giving them then good practices yes this has to be also post in the whatsapp group to encourage the uh, employees and the workers about the their good practices like picture with, uh, provide the picture with the descriptions date time location and responsible person first aid case so whenever any first aid issues are happening at the private site provide take a picture and with a description post it with the date time locations name of the victims who who got injured is we, uh, either it, it belongs to the MEIL employee then provide the employee id if it belongs to the contractor then write the contractor name location in charge who is the responsible person and treatment given by who has treated this first aid case near miss report suppose any near miss happened at the project site we are encouraging them to report it on the whatsapp group also so that it can be communicated to the entire project with immediately the near miss report also includes the picture with the descriptions, date, time, location, name of the reporting person who has reported this near miss, MEIL, either it is MEIL or contractor, location in charge, worst potential outcomes. Suppose this near miss could have occurred in the incident condition in time. So what could be the potential outcomes of the near miss and action taken, whatever the action taken for this near miss. Dangerous occurrence. This is called as a collapse of a major things and in uh, like a scaffoldings or collapse of structures or collapse of uh, the toppling of any cranes like a major accident but without any personal injuries that is we are considering as a dangerous occurrence and which also must be reported in the whatsapp group or reported must to the HO HSC teams. Then provide the picture with the descriptions, date time in 24 hours format, location, name of the reporting persons, either it belongs to the MEIL or contractor name, location in charge, worst case potential outcome. You, again you have to provide here the worst potential outcome which could be an action taken to prevent in the future. So as I discussed earlier it, regarding the daily meeting with site in charge, whenever you are meeting and you are discussing any points, that point has to be mentioned in the whatsapp group for the confirmation that you have discussed with the site in charge on day to day basis and you have to provide the uh, number of points in the whatsapp group and post it in the whatsapp group. Coming to the end of shift report, we have to provide the following information in end of the shift report like uh, give your name, number of observation made on that day, number of induction training conducted on that day, number of TBT, number of pep talk number of SAW issued, safety advisory warning note issued on that day, number of rectification done, number of good practices or any other work done on that shift or on that day. You have to provide by the end of shift. And for the end of the week report, this end of shift report must be cumulated from the Thursday to Wednesday and may, uh, post in the WhatsApp group. And the same information must be contained like this name, number of observations, induction training, number of TBT conducted, number of pep talk conducted, number of safety advi advisory warning note issued, number of rectification done, number of good practice and any other work done for the entire week and the week will be start from Thursday to Wednesday. There are some reports which must be sent through email on every month. These are the internal machinery safety audits, health and safety environment audits, electrical safety audits, food safety audits, store safety audits, fire safety audit, MIS reports and HSC committee meetings. These report must be shared by email before the end of 7th of each month. So for example, you are conducting performing this activity in the month of November. So the entire report of the November must be shared before 7th of December. Coming to the weekly observation report, so the community weekly observation report must be sent to the HO on every Thursday. 
For this weekly observation report, again the week will start from Thursday to Wednesday. So the one week will end on Wednesday. So after the th Wednesday, th on Thursday, we have to share this weekly observation report through email to your HOHSC coordinator. So performing the, all the activities, there are a lot of documents and these documents are available on our MILCA.com websites. For that, these are the link we have given here. For the access, your employee code will be your user ID and password at the initial stage. So whenever you are joining at the site, please provide your employee code to your HOHSC coordinator so that we can provide the access to MILCA.com. These are the directory or you can say the guides for the website access. You have, as you will in, uh, enter the MILCA.com, you will get one window called as employees and administrator. Please click on the employees. Then you have to enter your username. In each first time, your employee code will be your username as, as well as your password. Then hit on the login. You will it will be asked to the change the password. So change the password and keep whatever you required. After that, this window will come. In that, you have to click on the knowledge base. As you will click on the knowledge base, the lot of the materials will be available there. So just download whichever you required. MIL HSC department is also conducting an online exam on MILCA.com. This exam will be as a multiple choice questions and the passing percentage will be 50%. In our HSC departments, we are conducting a quarterly appraisal for all the per HSC personnel at the site level and even at HO level. So this is the matrix of for every site safety officers. So they will give 20% it's called a self appraisal and the 10% will be given by the HOD and 40% will be given by your coordinator and 30% given by your project managers. So remember that the coordinator and the PM has a very large percentage. So please communicate in a professional manner to these people's coordinator as well as the project managers so that you can get a higher percentage, higher marks in your appraisal. There is another point that is a books you must read. We uh, from the our departments we had released mainly three books for managing health, safety and environment. These are the books. First is HSC management system which we prepared according to our ISO 14001 as well as 45001s. Then these HSC implementation guidelines we prepared to, uh, to manage our health and safety in according to our organization. Then another one is a safe system of works. This safe system of works is mainly work practice relevant to work activities. And this how a work activity must be performed and executed in a safe manner. For you there are two video you must watch when you are joining in MEIL. The first one is itself these induction videos and second one is a induction indenting procedure videos. For that we have provi provided here a link for watching the indenting procedure video. So detailed indenting procedure will be discussed in both videos. And finally most important point is how to apply for the leave. So for that we have to take approval from your project manager at the site level then inform the project HR personnel as well as your respective HOHSC coordinator. And most important point regarding the transfer procedure. So how transfer is being handled in our HSC departments. So the project manager, HR personnel or project HO coordinator has to send a mail to respective HOHSC coordinator for releasing safety officer. Means from the project side, a project manager, HR personnel or project HO coordinator will raise or will send a mail to the HSC coordinator regarding the releasing of safety officer. Okay. Then this email will be sent to the HOD HSC for the approval. Then after that there is some process. The, after this, that those process, the HR department will prepare a transfer letter and that transfer letter will be sent to the project manager of the current project as well as the project where person will deploy after the transfer. Okay, But most important point you have to remember that 
a HSC officer must not move to another project without approval from HOD HSC. This is important point for all the HSC officers that you should not move from one project to another project without approval from the HOD HSC. Thank you. Thank you for the watching this induction videos. Hope you had understood something and you will follow the guidelines mentioned in the in this videos and in this presentations. For the detailed presentation, you will be asked to come the HO for the six days induction pro training program. Thank you once again.